I think one of the most radical and maybe revolutionary teachings of Jesus is when he said, love your enemies. Uh, he's the only one that ever took anybody beyond neighbor love to enemy love. And this wasn't like a suggestion or a good idea. I think this was Jesus saying this is an imperative. Like our lives as Jesus people will be marked by an extravagant, extraordinary, radicalized love that is extended to our family, our neighbors, our others' irritants, and our enemies. My friend Oshita Moore says that our enemy is not necessarily somebody who's enacting violence against us, but our enemy is that person or that group of people uh, that l exists beyond the reach of our empathy. That is, it's that person or it's that group of people who, if something bad happened to them, we wouldn't care that much. The way of Jesus is, yeah, you love, love that person, love that group. A Palestinian friend, Sami Awad, says, yeah, but to love my enemy, I must first understand my enemy. To understand my enemy, I need to get proximate to them. My friend Daoud Nasser and his family, a Palestinian Christian family, they live on the outskirts of Bethlehem and on a farm that's called the Tent of Nations. They can't avoid proximity from their constructed enemy because they're surrounded by five Israeli settlements occupied by some of the most ideologically extreme Jews, most of them American Jews. Uh, these settlements are trying everything they can do to take over Daoud's land. Uh, although they have papers for their land going back to the Ottoman Empire, they're making it very, very challenging for them to live there. Um, oftentimes, the settlers will invite uh, soldiers, uh, IDF, Israeli Defense Force soldiers, to, um, to raid the Tent of Nations, uh, to execute demolition orders that are trumped up to, and, and destroy as much as they can. It's just, it's a part of the reality of the system of militarized occupation. Yet at the very front of the farm is a stone, and the stone says we refuse to be enemies. This is a family who embodies Jesus' teaching of enemy love. Daoud tells the story of an evening he and his family were on their way home, and they're pulled over by, um, by a couple of trucks filled with soldiers. The soldiers poured out and came up to his window and, um, and notified Daoud that uh, he, it was a suspicious vehicle and they're going to search it, um, which essentially means tearing it apart. And uh, Daoud said, can, um, we're just on our way home. Um, can, can we just go this one time? They said, absolutely not. Uh, we need you to wake up your family. Now, he had kids in the back, and he knew that if, uh, if his kids woke up to the presence of soldiers, it would be really, really traumatizing, especially if there were guns involved. And so Daoud got out of the van and opened the, the, the side of the van and within earshot of the soldiers, um, woke his children up and said, um, hey, um, our van is gonna be searched right now. And I want you to know that there are soldiers and they've got guns, but don't worry, they're not here to hurt anyone. The search happens and of course it was, uh, it was scary for the kids. Uh, you know, everything is done. They get back in the vehicle. And as a soldier is handing Daoud his papers back, he says, I'm really, really sorry about this. Not too many days after I heard Daoud share that story with me, uh, I was working with an organization um, called Breaking the Silence, which is a peacemaking organization made up of former IDF soldiers uh, who have uh, begun to get in touch with the realities of what they've been a part of. And I heard this one soldier share a story of this one evening um, when he was a part of a platoon that pulled over a, a van. And um, the van was occupied by a family. And how the father in that van, um, how he introduced his kids to the soldiers um, he being one of them that were about to execute this, this search. And he said that the way that this dad introduced the soldiers to his kids changed everything for him. It was like the seed or the stone that dropped into the water that created a ripple of transformation. You see, when Daoud refused to be enemies, when he loved his enemy by simply humanizing them to his children, um, that was a catalyst for major transformation. It was the journey um, of an enemy becoming a friend and then a co-creating partner. This is part of the power, I think, of what Jesus is saying when he says, love your enemy. He recognizes that this is the most disarming, powerful force of love 
on the planet for its love alone that can transform that enemy into a friend.